An advisor to former Vice President Joe Biden is facing an avalanche of criticism after she condescendingly dismissed Bernie Sanders following the debate on Sunday night. So now here's what she said. I think it's fair to say that Vice President Biden showed up to a debate tonight and for two hours graciously dealt with the kind of protester who often shows up at campaign events on live television. Similar versions of Dunn's remark from a post-debate call with journalists were reported by Janet Hook of the LA Times, Ken Thomas of the Wall Street Journal, and Natasha Karecki of Politico. So this is confirmed, an advisor, a Biden advisor, basically dismissing Bernie Sanders. I mean, oh, he's one of those people, like just like one of those protesters. Ugh. Good on Joe to humor him. The condescension, dude. I can just imagine her sipping a glass of wine, doing the same thing. Ugh. Uh, she humored him. Oh, good for him. Oh, just, I mean, but think about it, though. That's how the people feel about us. We're inconvenient to them, progressives. Oh, you're just loud. You're just rude. Oh, I can't wait till we go back to the days of civility. What all these, I don't have to listen to these loud, poor people. I mean, that's what it is. Why don't you just know your place and shut up? Don't get in line. Get in line, vote for Joe Biden. Ugh. But look, that's how they feel about us. That's how Biden feels about us with his dismissiveness. Uh, that's how the establishment feels about us. We're a pain in their ass. And the reason that we're a pain in the ass is because we actually challenge them on their record. And we ask them, well, what are you going to do for regular working people? We actually expect more from our politicians instead of happily falling in line. So... Obviously, she got a lot of criticism from progressives. Uh, let's start with Jeet here, who is the national affairs correspondent at The Nation, correctly saying the Biden people have nothing but contempt for the progressive wing of the party. Now, look, I know there are people saying, oh, there's no division in the Democratic Party. In fact, by doing something, a story like this, you are creating the division in the Democratic Party. How dare you be divisive? How dare you say stuff against the presumptive nominee, Joe Biden? How dare you? No, there already is a divide, right? No, there. look, it's you can't ignore this divide between progressives and the moderates of the rest of the party. If you do, you're, you're basically trying to paint over a crack in the foundation. That's not going to work. The foundation is literally falling apart. It does not make this go away. Ignoring the fact that we have this, oh, because, well, we, we, we need to focus on Donald Trump. That, that's it. No, dude, no, you, you can't defeat someone like Trump or Trumpism when your house is on fire. I mean, and that's what the Democratic Party is. I know it's a poor analogy, but uh, our, our house is on fire. And we can't look, you know, right now, the Democratic Party is sitting in that house and saying, this is fine. No, there's no division. There's nothing wrong here. We're going to beat Donald Trump by using the same old playbook that Hillary Clinton used in 2016. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to warn you. Yes, there's a division here between the party elites and the rest of the party, the progressives. And the media and the party elites are ignoring the will of the people. And that is the source of this division. But here's the thing. They, they, they lie. They use the media to gaslight and run cover for them while they'll sell out the future young people for corporate donations. And that's a big problem here. Now, Columbia Law student uh, Alex Clavering also made a point. Uh, he tweeted that the Democratic Party has nothing but disdain for activists. So building on G here's point, right? Because, uh, oh, okay, they disdain, they have disdain for progressives. But not just progressives, but actual activists, people who go out and, and protest. A and that's exactly what she was alluding to. Oh. He's like one of those stupid protesters that come up to our rallies and harass us and actually ask us questions. We hate that. We hate that. We don't want that. Uh, now, you got to ask the question, though, where was the establishment in Standing Rock? Hmm? Where, where was Obama and Biden during the Keystone XL fight? Oh, right. We were fighting Obama on both of those issues. Tr 
trying to convince him to not build those pipelines, which grudgingly his administration decided not to do, but not without these massive, massive fights. And that's the problem. You do not see any of these Democratic establishment politicians support grassroots protest movements. They don't even give them a microphone. Except for Bernie Sanders, who did literally give Black Lives Matter a microphone. Now, Dunn's comment also came in the wake of activists with various groups interrupting a Biden rally in Detroit to call out the former vice president for supporting NAFTA and to pressure him to embrace the Green New Deal. But Biden seems to have a problem whenever anybody asks him a challenging question. He always comes off either angry, combative, or condescending. I mean, look, I, I, I use this uh, sound a lot on my soundboard. Why, 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 you're getting nervous, man. That was a guy just asking Biden a question. That was a reporter. He's easily agitated because he can't handle it when people challenge him and his power. How many times has he told people who ask him or challenge him a question or try to get him to, to explain or change his policy to go and vote for Donald Trump? D go vote for Trump then. Go vote for somebody else. Uh, that's not somebody who's going to bring people in to create a coalition that you're, you're going to use to beat Donald Trump. No, he's pushing people away. He's pushing potential voters away. And, and, and it's amazing that they don't see that, but they don't want to see that. Now, by, by the way, at, at that Detroit protest, you know what he referred to uh, the protesters as? Oh, it's the Bernie bros. They're here. The Bernie brothers. Sorry. Oh, the Bernie brothers are here. You know what also isn't going to help? When you erase young men and women of color and use a widely debunked media narrative created specifically against Sanders supporters to erase them. Now, probably the most accurate description of how the party feels about progressives comes from Naomi Klein, where she said, understand that all of us in the Sanders campaign are seen as nothing but trespassers on their party property, and they absolutely cannot wait to call the cops. Yeah. I mean, look, right there, super accurate, 100%. She's right. Naomi Klein is, is probably one of the best uh, progressive thinkers that we have. I mean, and, and you've got a lot of great thinkers. You get, you know, Professor Richard Wolf. You got all these wonderful thinkers, right? Naomi Klein is 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 right, right on the nose, right here, uh, and so they do they they want to be like uh, you know that that lady that calls the cops on black people. Uh, you guys remember those stories? You remember? I mean, that's and, and by the way, they want us off their lawn unless or in, I should say until it's time to vote. Then they want our votes. And they'll expect the next. They'll spend the next few months. By the way, uh, you know, vote shaming people. They've already begun, right? Mockingly asking if we challenge them. Hey, like, do something more progressive, right? So have Biden come out and 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 meet us on our territory. If you want our vote, come out and try to appeal to us. Then, well, and then those will be like, well, you're just going to vote for Trump, aren't you? Uh, and then when Biden inevitably loses, which I think he will, um. They will do exactly what they did when Hillary Clinton lost last time. They're going to blame us for it instead of the failures of their own campaign. Now, I know a lot of people who are progressives who held our nose and voted for Hillary Clinton. Oh, the overwhelming majority did so. You know what happened after that? Donald Trump won. We got blamed for the next three years. Three years. I, look, I voted for Hillary Clinton, right? I got a lot of crap from progressives for that. And I, I don't, I am, I don't want to go through that again, right? I, I voted the right way. I did everything I'm supposed to, and I'm still called a Russian plant Bernie bro. And that I'm the fault of Trump. The Democratic Party hates us. They hate us because we challenge their power. We challenge their authority. We constantly expose the flaws 
in Democratic leadership. And we proved that they're not really the, the good guys after all. And that's not to say Republicans aren't a billion times worse. They are. They're monstrous. But, Repub uh, but Democrats, they're really not all that much better. I mean, social issues, sure. Social issues, sure. Uh, and again, the thing is, is that nothing makes a liberal more angry than undermining their moral high ground from the left. And so it, but it's not good to be less monstrous than a monster. 68,000 people die annually due to lack of health care. 40% of Americans can't afford a $400 emergency. 60% can't afford a hundred, uh, a $1,000 emergency. I mean, look, home prices are too expensive. Credit card debts exploded. Household debts, student loan debt, wages are stagnant. Democrats, and by the way, when they were in charge, they did little tiny tweaks around the edges. You can blame Republicans. Of course, they've had a huge hand in this. They do block everything the Democrats try to do. I get it, right? But why are, Dem why are Republicans winning elections in the first place? They shouldn't be. The Republican Party is disastrous. They're monstrous. They're bought by the rich. How can you lose against them? How could you lose against Donald Trump? How? How? Maybe it's because people feel like there, there is no point. Because when you run Republican light versus a Republican, well, they're going to vote for a Republican. People don't want moderation. People do want change. And so, look, even some great good-natured voters who believe in progressive policies have been convinced by cable news that they should vote for moderates, that that's their only chance, just to be safe, just to be safe. And this is what's happening in this election, I believe. And not only that, but of course you have elderly turnout, right? Elderly turnout outpaced that of 2016. But you know what also uh, outpaced uh, turnout? Youth turnout. Younger people are out, but older people just happen to be out a lot more. And they're generally more uh, consistent voters. And so that's what you have, right? Uh, and so that, look, let me bring you uh, to a quote quote here from Glenn Greenwald, right? Who said this, the Democratic, um, I'm sorry, when Democratic establishment figures spend a couple of weeks condescendingly pretending to like and respect Sanders and his voters, remember what they really think of you. Because they will try to gaslight. Now that they think that they've got this entire primary locked up, which it's not over yet, um, but it could be today. <laughs> it could very well be today. But this is what they think about you that you're annoying, that they want you out of the party, that they don't care about you, that they think you're, you know, just somebody who's in the way. Just those people at our rallies, at that protest, just ignore them. No, we don't care about them at all. That's what they think about you if you're a progressive. Diane Russell, by the way, former Democratic state representative uh, and gubernatorial candidate in Maine said this, uh, she said that alienating young voters who overwhelmingly support Bernie is a terrible idea and detracts from an otherwise healthy debate. She's absolutely right. Uh, Ryan Grimm also suggests the comment could have consequences at the ballot box. And this is what they're really afraid of, right? Uh, as soon as Biden took the lead and a lot of younger people were like, no, we're not voting for Joe Biden. For one, he has no empathy for our struggles. And he said so openly. Two, he's condescending and he spits in her eye at every chance. Again, remember the condescending laugh that he had during the debate. Uh, now they're freaking out because, oh, turns out that young people really aren't interested. Oh, oh, crap. Now we've got to go and appeal to those those people. Oh, I guess we need you need us now, right? OK, well, you need us now. Then come to our side on policy. Come over to us. Come over to us. Start talking about. Uh, actual student debt, you know, uh, cancellation. C come to our side on policy. I mean, that is one way to get voters. Another way is to stop talking like this. That would be great. Uh, but Grimm said this, what can motivate a Biden advisor to say something like this? Shouldn't this level of contempt 
be kept to dinner parties and green rooms? Mm. Look, I don't think it's an accident that she said this to reporters. I, I do think that she wants us to know how much she despises us. So that we know our place. Because what what are what's our other option? Trump? You're going to fall in line anyway. What, what do you want, Trump? It, it's the same level of hubris and condescension from 2016. And we see how that ended up. I think the Democratic establishment has learned absolutely nothing from this, from this entire experience. And unfortunately, they, they never will because their paychecks depend on not understanding. Hey guys, hopefully you enjoyed that free video. Now I'm going to have to ask you a favor. Between the uh, demonetization and the YouTube algorithm messing around with view counts, etc. We're having a hard time adjusting to the new YouTube reality, which is where you guys come in. See, we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash TYTNation set up to help us rely on the, you guys, the viewers, instead of big corporate ads. Look, you know the show. You know how I'm not in favor of big corporations anyway. So help us transition away from relying on the ad model to pay the bills and sign up to be a patron, patreon.com slash TYT Nation. That goes a long way to help us keep the lights on. And you guys will know that you're supporting independent progressive media.